Well, happy Friday, everyone. It's me, Jaime, the shut-in cartoonist, doing that second cup of coffee. It's, it's close to 8 o'clock in the morning on Friday. And, of course, we are vlogcasting today from the actual Corn Tortilla Press World Headquarters. Yeah, yesterday, I, you know, Amy was gone, so I was downstairs just to switch it up, and I was in her spot, which she caught, because <laughs> I do post these, right? And wherever she was at, she saw it and, and said, oh, check you out, sliding right into that spot. But as I say, you know, it's um, I could be like the family dog, right? You know, and not supposed to be on the furniture, and as soon as the family leaves, there I am, you know, right on that couch, shedding my fur all over the place. Anyway, today's discussion, while I drink my Pete's, Mm. If anyone from Pete's Coffee is watching, let me tell you, man, this is the best stuff in the world. Uh, I've been a loyal Pete's drinker, coffee drinker for close to 40 years, probably 37, 38 years. I love Pete's. All right, here we go. Today, as those of you that, that know me, or maybe you don't, you're going to find out now. Been a music fanatic since I was a young child. Um, played musical instruments. I was a drummer as a kid, sang in choirs by the time I was in high school. I was fronting bands as a singer, faking it on the bass in some bands while singing, and even drummed in a bunch of bands too in high school. By the time I got out of high school, I was playing guitar and it, there was no looking back. I have always been since I was a little kid. I don't know what it was about it, but I've always loved, I do know what it's about, I always loved R&B, soul, funk, and jazz, but blues, something about blues just hit me, and when, once I became a guitar player, you know, always listening to blues guitars, it, I was well on my way, and uh, somewhere in the mid-80s, living in San Francisco, playing in, you know, unknown, forgettable punk bands, and sitting in with some, eh, you know, fairly known blues bands, starting other blues bands, uh, sitting in with other blues bands for starting up, but you, you get the idea. I wanted a little practice amp to have at home to play, so I didn't have to plug in my big beast. I had a mid-70s uh, Fender Pro Reverb I had for about 31 years. Oh, I bought from my best friend, Art, Art Arturo, and that thing was a 70 watts. Uh, it was heavier than a Samoan. It was, and then I put new speakers in it about 12 years ago, no, maybe 15 years ago, uh, some tone tubbies, which made it even heavier. Now, 70 watts, all that weight, after a while, it was like, man, I was never playing it, so I sold it. But the amp I did keep was the practice amp that I bought. And that was, um, like I said, mid-80s at Real Guitars, which is owned by Ben Levin and Chris Cobb. And former owner, Joe McNamara, dear friend of mine, and great guitar player. Um... So I was in their mid-80s, and Ben was behind the counter. Ben and I are the same age, so we would chop it up about comics and baseball and, you know, God knows whatever guys our age would talk about. And um, I was telling him, yeah, I'm looking for a, a practice amp. You got any ideas? And, of course, by the counter that in those days, I haven't been in there in a while, they had all these Fender amps. I'm only laughing because it's like, oh, my God, look at these. Um uh, from Biggins, you know, from concert amps and, and all that, all the way down to Champ Amps. And all these tweed ones were sitting there. And there was like eight or nine in various uh, forms of condition of Champ Amps, tweed Champ Amps. So I picked one of the better ones that were in better shape. And I remember back, it was the mid-80s prices too. Ben was saying, okay, it was like $120. And, but he says, I'll tell you what, you know, before tax, he goes, I'll let you have it for 90 so I got out of there with about hundred bucks, hundred bucks, and this is it right here. Uh, this beautiful specimen, I still have it and play it. I love this thing. Can you see that? And it, you know, I was it was sold to me as a 1957 Fender Champ amp. You know, great condition. I mean, it's probably got a few dings and stuff over the years, but you know, original, you know, little Bakelite cord. Or end of the, let me find this here. You know, the whole nine, man. It was just great. The only thing I replaced on there was the, the strap. Anyway, sounds, I, I've used it in a few recordings for people's vanity projects. I did some solos for, for this woman's album and some slide on it. And I played one song on somebody else's. But I've always brought this amp and, you know, both different engineers were like, wow, that thing gets a great tone. I was like... Yeah, it gets kind of clean. You take the plug out. And the other channel it gets pretty dirty. We're going to use a dirty one here. And, woo, it's it's awesome. 
So anyway, right around about, oh, I don't know, five, six years ago, I was playing it, you know, and the tubes were getting loose and it was making that buzz, you know, you know, like where it almost blows the speaker out. So I was like, okay, I got to take this in. And there's a guy in San Rafael, California. I'd been living in Marin for almost 27 years before I moved to the East Bay. And uh, his name is Chris Barnett. And I met Chris way back, who also worked not at Real Guitars, there's three businesses there, and he worked at Gary Brower Instrument Repair. Because it was Real Guitars, Gary Brower Instrument Repair in the back on the right, and there's a door on the left, and you go in there and you see none other than the man himself, Dan Ransom, who's a, a, a luthier and builds guitars. But anyway, so, you know, Chris worked back there way back in the day, and we were buddies. And now he's doing, you know, really great amp repair, and he's living and based in San Rafael. So I give him a ding. Hey, man, you know, I don't know why people do this with the phone, right? You can just do this. But anyway, and he says, yeah, bring it in. So I bring it in, and um, a day or so later, he calls me and says, well, I got good news, and I got weird news. And I'm like, all right, well, give me the good news. And he says, well, the good news is your amp's done. It's ready to go, man. You know, quoted me the price of the phone. Really love He gave me a deal. He didn't have to. Sweetheart of a guy. And I go, okay, that's great. And I go, well, I'm kind of curious. What's what's the weird news? And he goes, the weird news is it's not a 1957 Fender Champ amp. I went, oh, geez, last 30 years now I've been calling it a 57. I've had several million different people offer to buy it from me. Everybody from Terry Haggerty to, you know, all sorts of guitarists. And he goes, um, no, nah, it's not a 57, Jaime. It's a 56. I was like, oh, dude, you're kidding me. That's awesome. So it's even older. And I don't know, I heard recently looking at it, somebody was quoting it, a music nerd last year, two years ago, was telling me that it's it's probably a $2,000 amp now or close to it. So thank you, Ben. $100 investment, you know, and it's a wonderful amp. Um, there you go. That's, that's my little thing for today. I know I, golly, seven minutes talking about it freaking amp but there you go so that's one of my little passions and uh it's i love this thing it's here and um i don't know i don't think i'll play it today because i'm playing acoustic stuff lately anyway so if you're gonna go out today and you know or get online and go buy an amp or do curbside pickup or uh i think they already looted the uh the guitar center over at uh, emeryville but wherever you live that you're seeing this um, yeah, I highly recommend Fenders. I play Strats and Tele. Stratocasters and Telecasters are, are my cup of tea. Though I do play some gibson -y big box guitars. Um, but if you're going to go out, mask up, wash them hands, sanitize them, don't touch anybody, don't lick anything. But most importantly, please, please, please be kind to one another and be kind to yourself. So for all kind, it'll be a really kind place to be. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Feel free to go to my website at corntortillapress.com. I will post the link below. Be sure to go ahead and subscribe to me if you want. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks.